Hey everyone, I am back and I've got a lot to talk about, so stick around. Hey guys, welcome back into the channel. It seems like I've been gone forever, and I will explain my absence here in just a minute, um, but I wanted to take a moment and welcome all of the new subs to the channel. Uh, I thought that during my absence, I would come back and find that my channel had just basically shriveled up and died, but to my surprise, I have gained a ton of new subscribers, and I am so thankful for that. So, um, real quick, if you don't mind, if you're new here, just kind of drop a comment below and let me know how you stumbled across this channel and what made you want to subscribe to it. So, again, I am shocked to see all the new people that are here watching, so thank you so much for that. So if you are new here, my name is Andrew, and along with my wife, Jessica, we run an online reselling business named Five Little Ducks Resale. And on this channel, that's all we talk about is reselling and various aspects of it. And so basically what we do is we go into garage sales and thrift stores and estate sales, and we find items that we think are undervalued, and then we flip them online for a profit on sites like Facebook, Mercari, Poshmark, and of course, eBay. So before we do get into anything reselling-wise, I wanted to take a moment and explain why I have been gone. So back on January 10, I accompanied my father into a what we thought was going to be a routine medical appointment uh, at one of the local hospitals. Well, unfortunately, one of the tests didn't come back as expected, and so he ended up being admitted and then ultimately being transferred to a different hospital where he underwent a procedure. When all was said and done, he ended up spending about 10 days total in the hospital. And during that time, um, I wanted to make sure that I was able to visit with him or do whatever I needed to do and to make sure that he was comfortable and, and, and even after he came home, you know, making sure that all was well. So nothing earth shattering with me, of course, which is great. You know, I'm thankful that my father got the necessary medical care that he did and uh, we're just waiting for him to heal back up and then he goes back for a different procedure uh, later on this month. So there may be another absence in the future, but we'll, we'll take that as it comes. But again, I apologize for that absence. Of course, family always does come first with us. So I hope you guys definitely understand. So now I guess we get to talk about some reselling. So after the holidays, one of the things that I hoped was going to be more prevalent down here was going to be garage sales. Now, the temperatures haven't been that bad. Um, so a few weekends, there were one or two garage sales here and there, but there really haven't been anything. However, the weekend before last, I was able to go to a few garage sales and estate sales. And so I filmed the segment of what we picked up so check that out. Hey guys, this is the first official haul video of 2023. I know it's uh, already the end of January and I would have liked to have gotten at least a few out by now, but uh, if future me, future editing me, I should say, is correct, then I should have already told you why I have been absent. So without further ado, let's jump right in and uh, we'll, we'll show you what I found. So what you're seeing here consists of one estate sale visited on two different occasions and a couple of different garage sales. So all total, I spent about $133. So I'll show you what I got and hopefully make some money off this stuff. All right, so we'll jump in on this side. This is some lower cost items. I paid 50 cents a piece for these. Um, you know, not big, super high price items that I'm gonna retire on by any means. But one of the cool things about these is that they're multi-quantity. So once you take a picture of one and list it, you know, and just wait for them to all sell. I don't mind selling low-cost items like this. It just, you know, helps to fill out the store. And I wasn't sure if I was going to lot these up or just do them individually. It really depends. But with, you know, paying 50 cents a piece, I definitely didn't want to pass that up. And over here, we found some Hello Kitty stuff as well, just some art stuff. I'll probably lot these things up. So that was at one garage sale. At another garage sale, um, this item here, this Carhartt hoodie, uh, I think this was a boys, yeah, it's a boys double XL size 20. It has a nice uh, spell out on the sleeve, so whenever I see Carhartt stuff, I'll, I'll pick it up. For three bucks, it wasn't a bad deal at all. So let me get that out of the way and go on to the next stuff. So the rest of the stuff here, um, like I said, I went to the one estate sale, but I visited it twice. Uh, once was the 25% off day, and the other one was the 75% off day. So um, this first item here, this coloring book. It's a vintage coloring book. Got it for, um, I think it was 50 cents. The way that I track how much I spend is a little bit different because I tend to cost average everything out. Um, but I believe the coloring book, uh, somewhere around here, yeah, so I, 75 cents, that's what I come up with. 
But coloring books are interesting because they're vintage, and if you can find them where they're relatively unused, they do sell. So case in point, I recently sold two coloring books. Um, they were both from the 90s. One even had some coloring in it, and they both sold within a little while. Like One sold within 10 minutes, and the other one sold overnight. So I probably even underpriced them. Now, this particular one, as I was leafing through it, did have some writing or some coloring. But as long as you disclose that, I mean, these are the, really the only pages that have that in there. It should still sell. Um, I'll obviously have to do some comps, but uh, vintage coloring books, definitely keep on the look for those. Uh, these next items um, are a little bit of an interesting thing as well, and I'll have to do some explaining of what these are. Um, this, these were done by a French company. Um, these are called letterprint art pieces, and the way these are, these are all new sealed. I have 15 of them, all of various designs, but they're multi-quantity, so I may have, you know, three or four of these. But they use this vintage kind of like 1950s pressing machine that imprints the design onto some really heavy-duty paper. And they, I think they use 100% cotton paper. And unlike traditional printing methods, which use like a four-color print, you know, cyan, yellow, magenta, black, these use hand-printed single-color inks, which are pretty cool. Um, so you can really get some vibrant colors, stuff that you wouldn't normally be able to achieve using that four-color print system. Uh, there's one over here that I'll show you, and these are all in French, by the way. They, like I said, these are done with a um, by a French company. You can see letterpress.fr, and they have some YouTube videos on their process. You can kind of see what they look like close up, and I think that's the machine there that actually does the printing. It's called Letterpress Art. But there's one here. It's an Alice in Wonderland um, white rabbit. And what's interesting about this is that look at the brightness and it may not even come through on the YouTube video, but the brightness of that ink, it is literally, you know, a fluorescent orange or a day glow orange. And you just cannot get that brightness of ink without, you know, using very specific ink colors. Like, again, this isn't a four color ink process like a newspaper or a, or a book um, or a magazine even. I mean, this is, this is, these are all hand done. And so really we're doing, you know, using this process, there's no two prints that are exactly alike because of the way that the ink is applied, the way that the press is applied. Um, I paid $3 a piece for these. And again, they are all brand new, sealed, ready to be framed. They are, they feel high quality. They're on thick cotton paper. I don't know if there's a market for it or not. You know, you always see, you know, French artwork or something along those lines. I'm hoping that somebody will want to buy these. Don't know what I'm going to list them for just yet. I believe they retail for $40 if you were to buy them on their website, um, but again, they are based in France. Uh, not a very old company, if I recall, but anyway, just did some research briefly, but I thought those were kind of cool. But at that same estate sale, I found some of these figures here. They were in an unmarked box. I ended up getting them for about 50 cents a piece after the discount. Uh, bendable Power Ranger, I got a wrestler. I got uh, another wrestler, Macho Man, Randy Savage. Got a Chuck E. Cheese, a uh, old Cookie Monster and a Bugs Bunny. Um, this one had a last sold comp of around $40 free shipping. So I was gonna try to at least get 35 free shipping or 35 plus shipping. Um, but you know, this one definitely, if you look at the bottom of it, you can hopefully get that, uh, 1985, definitely vintage. So 50 cents a piece, definitely couldn't pass those up. You know, these were the kind of fun things that I like to find when you dig through a box don't exactly know what it is, but it's fun to find. And of course, this is a Granny Square Afghan. Um, it has one hole in it, which wasn't too bad, but I didn't see any other defects. I've had a few of these listed before. I think I may have sold one already. Um, I have a bigger one that I have listed higher. It's a it's a different type of design, so it's it's been listed high, hoping that someone bites on it. But you know, uh, I wouldn't normally have paid as much as they wanted. Um, they wanted 25, but I went on that 75% off day, so I got it for six and a quarter. So definitely a better deal there. So whenever I see these, I, I definitely compare the price. Um, but you know, it's fun, and they're not that bad to ship. They are. They tend to be heavy. You know, these heavy duty, heavy duty fabrics or the yarns. 
um, it can be a little bit pricey to ship, but that's all right. Uh, what, let's see here. This was also on the 75% off day. This was an $8 bag. They had a price, so I got it for two bucks. It's a vintage Continental Airlines, I think, carry-on bag. And that is interesting. It looks like it's almost like the shape of a tennis racket. It's just the side pocket. And I actually have this stuffed with bags right now just to give it its shape. So obviously, pro tip, if you're going to be doing bags, it's good to stuff it with something to kind of show their, their overall shape. But uh, it's probably a faux leather. It is made in USA, which is really nice. Um, but things of this age are usually like, you know, dry. They have kind of a bad feel to them. This one feels almost brand new. I mean, the leather is really soft. You can see that it moves around pretty freely. It's it's actually a nice bag. And none of the printing is is defective either, which is nice. And that's the only side that has the logo. Um, so I'll have to do some research on that. I've never sold something like that before, but I know that, um, you know, older airline stuff can do well. You know, things like TWA or Piedmont, you know, those brands, um, yeah, you know, it just really depends. So over here we have some belt buckles, and I first found these on the 25% off day and noticed that they wanted anywhere between $10 and $35 a piece. So I was uh, contemplating going back on that 75% off day, so I'm glad that I did. So I did cost average them out though, so when I did my calculations for how much I spent on everything, I averaged about $4.50 a piece, which I don't think is too bad. But these are all uh, heritage mint, kind of high relief, 100% brass, uh, they are numbered some really cool some really cool pieces they're all of course very vintage early 80s maybe even late 70s there's one here that is really neat it's not um heritage mint but it almost is like a 3d it's extremely high relief and it's colored with some clear enamel which is really cool and so i think that uh the arroyo grande buckle company it's a really cool piece but about 450 a piece i'm hoping to sell these between uh, I would say maybe 15 to 35, they sound kind of like what the, the estate sale company was asking for. I did see sold comps on eBay for some of the exact ones, so I'm just going to base it off there. And I did find a couple of new in-box ones as well, which are kind of cool. Down here are some jewelry pieces. I have uh, an AT&T Olympic pin, got two of those. Some cufflinks that say U.S. Congress, which is interesting. Some VFW pins. And uh, was included in those was this little angel cherub pin. Not sure about these. Probably not super expensive, but worth a shot. This was an interesting piece. Um, Ford Audio Systems demonstration tape. I looked it up. There seemed to be some sold comps. Again, nothing major. I got it for a dollar, uh, and after the discount, it was a quarter. So maybe five bucks on eBay plus shipping. Never know. The last item I'll go through are these. This is a vintage box of staples. Now, that's kind of a strange thing to get. Um, but I read on the Bolo Buddies Facebook group, if you're not a part of that, I highly suggest joining it because everyone is always posting, you know, good bolos or things to be on the lookout for. And somebody had mentioned, um, like, industrial pieces, you know, nails and things of that nature. And so when I saw these, I kind of gave it a thought. Now, I think I paid maybe 75 cents for this box after the discount. And they are all here. They're all new, all new vintage staples. So I, I don't know if there's a market for it, but for 75 cents, I figured I would take a shot. Uh, it's fairly heavy, so shipping will be a challenge to figure out on that. Um, but I did see some sold comps, not for this exact same one, but I think similar ones. So well, that's about it. Um, let me know how you think that I've done. Um, you know, it was nice to get out there again uh, into the swing of things. It's been a while since I've been able to get out. I've been able to go to my the the thrift store that my daughter works at a few times just to get some 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 clothes and this and that throughout uh, the, the the past couple of weeks just to keep things in the store. But it was nice to get out and find some of this stuff. So we will get it listed and processed here and we'll hopefully have it on some of the What Sold videos coming up. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you're new to the channel, what I've been trying to do is align my YouTube video release schedule with the most recent solds in my store. The problem is, and I've re I referenced this in, a, in an earlier video, when I started YouTube, I didn't realize how much work there was going to be, so that when my video release schedule got further and further apart, my what solds were further and further in the history. 
uh, because there was just so many of them. So that's why I've been releasing some, some of the um, what sold only videos to try to bridge that gap between where I am in my video release schedule to where I am in my what solds. Now the lack of sales in January is definitely gonna help bridge that gap because there just hasn't been that much stuff selling. Um, and so I'll be able to group a lot many more days together in these what sold segments. But for this specific video, what we're looking at as far as what solds, we're back from the beginning of December. I still think it's a good idea to go through what has sold just so that people may be new to the industry, um, know what to look for, know what to buy, know what to price things at. So I, I do think that these are a, a very valuable resource. And we'll start out with these. These are the set of two die-cast gas pumps, the Chevrolet and Ford vintage-style gas pumps, which sold for $9.99 plus shipping. And you may remember those items from the recent uh, Mystery Bin update. I'll link to the two videos, the main one and then the update video, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about. The next item up was this new in-box 2018 Hallmark keepsake ornament called Eight Maids Milking from the 12 Days of Christmas and it sold for $24.99 plus shipping. Next up, we had this Newith Tags Black Knight Rider Motorcycle Embroidered Baseball Cap, which sold for $6.99 plus shipping. Following that, we had this vintage 1989 Donruss New York Yankees Complete Team Set, which sold for $2.99 plus shipping. Next up, we had a pair of these Judy Blue Women's Size 728 Boyfriend Fit Jeans, and they sold for $29.99 plus shipping. Next up was this Disney Store Big Hero 6 Baymax plush in a trapper hat and scarf, which sold for $17.99 plus shipping. Following that was this Department 56 Heritage Village, a Christmas Carol morning set of three figures, and these sold for $9.99 plus shipping. Next up was a pair of bath sets. This was the new Tuscan Hills Cherry Blossom three-piece set, and these sold for $13.98 plus shipping. Following that was this vintage Milton Bradley handheld Yahtzee game, and this ended up selling for $13.99 plus shipping. Next up was this vintage Girl Scouts vest with lots of patches and pins, and this ended up selling for $24.99 plus shipping. And not long after that sold, an individual patch sold. This one was the Vintage Girl Scout Health and Safety Dental Toothbrush Patch, which sold for $1.99 plus shipping. Up next was this True Grit Men's Size Medium Gray Pebble Pile Quarter Zip Sherpa Fleece, which sold for $24.99 plus shipping. In the next item to sell, not surprisingly, was another Department 56. This was the Department 56 Carolers on a Doorstep four-piece figure set, and this sold for $9.99 plus shipping. Up next was this 2019 Hasbro Pound Puppy Plush, the 8-inch variety, and it sold for $9.99 plus shipping. Following that was another one of these, the 2018 Hallmark Ornaments, the 8 Maids of Milking, and it sold, like the last one, for $24.99 plus shipping. Just an aside here, this is a great illustration of why multi-quantity items are so easy. Because you list it once and it keeps on selling. Up next was this 3D embossed black and white and gray cow mug, which sold for $7.99 plus shipping. And this next item was from our Gina consignment lot. This was a BCB Girls brown sequin colorfully lined strap hobo shoulder bag, which sold for $11 plus shipping. Following that was this new with tags, Disney Store Beauty and the Beast Lumiere Mini Beanbag Plush, which sold for $9.99 plus shipping. Up next was this Reebok Women's Size Double XL Pittsburgh Steelers Yellow Camo Long Sleeve Shirt, which ended up selling for $17.99 plus shipping. Up next was this Nerds Candy Size Extra Large Blue T-Shirt, which sold for $9.99 plus shipping. Following that, this was a great sale from our anime haul. This was the new Trinity Blood, the complete series, 24 episodes on three Blu-ray discs, and it sold for $34.99 plus shipping. This next item was one of the last remaining pieces from our Shoe Palooza estate sale haul. These were the new in-box BZ's Women's Size 10 Comfy Clog Slippers, and these sold for $39.99 plus shipping. 
For those who are curious about the Shoe Palooza haul, uh, I do have a video on that, and this is where we ran across an estate sale. Uh, we, we found a huge number of shoes uh, and jeans and, and whatnot, and um, have sold through a majority of that and made a ton of money. So super cool, super cool sale. Up next was another Gina item. This was the Newest Tags Wonder Nation Boy Size XL Gray and Blue Short Sleeve Raglan T-shirt, which sold for $3.99 plus shipping. This next sale was great, and it has a cool story behind it. This was the new sealed BBC History of World War II 12-disc DVD set, and it sold for $74.99 plus shipping. So the story behind this was that I had gotten this free from my dad to sell. He gives me things from randomly from time to time where he doesn't use them anymore and wants me to sell them. And this had sat in my store for quite some time because when I was researching it, I found that it actually sold for quite a bit. I had it listed for probably $85 to $90. Well, a buyer reached out and said that she was attending a Christmas party um, later that week and needed this for a gift for the person uh, who was going to be there. He was a veteran and he was evidently one of the guest of honors there. And so she asked if I could uh, send it any faster than priority mail. Now, because this was in December and priority mail, you know, usually takes between one to four days and uh, I couldn't necessarily guarantee that level of delivery because it was in December. Uh, what I told her I would do was lower the price a little bit, but have to charge her for the Priority Mail Express shipping, which is a ton of money. Um, I ended up splitting the difference with her because I, I the shipping alone turned out to be about $30. And so I dropped the price $30 and had her pay about $30. Uh, it, it equaled out in the end. But again, it was a really good sale. It went to a good cause. The buyer got it and everyone's happy. The next item up was this Justice League Brave and the Bold number 28 reprint from a Loot Crate exclusive, and this sold for $12.99 plus shipping. This next item also has a great story attached to it. This was the Vintage Villaroy and Bach, Botch? I don't know how to say that. Foxwood Tales by Brian Patterson Mug featured a mouse bowling, and this sold for $74.99 plus shipping. Now this mug, and one like it, if you remember, I talked about it very briefly on a haul that we did. It was the Unorthodox Haul, where we got all this stuff for free because it was for a consignment sale with our friends Beth and Larry. Well, I didn't think about these mugs too much because I thought that they were Beatrix Potter or something thereabouts. But when I was doing the research to try to figure out what this was, uh, I saw that the sold comps were just out of this world for this series of mug. And in doing my research and I was looking at how to how to price this effectively, you know, I took a kind of a stab in the dark. I thought I put it on the high side based upon the different comps and the different ones that are currently being sold, which again, isn't a lot because this is, I guess, fairly rare. So I listed this mug and it literally sold within about 30 minutes and it sold to someone overseas. So it just goes to show that even mugs can be worth something if they're a part of the right series. The next item up was a Squishmallow. This was Otto the Grim Reaper. He was a tiny one, four and a half inch tall, but he was new with tags, and he sold for $18.49 plus shipping. And the last sale of the eBay store from this time period, and the last eBay sale of this video, was this vintage 1977 Wilton Superman cake pan, and it sold for $5.99 plus shipping. Now let's take a look at some of the things that have also sold out of the Mercari store around that same time frame. We will kick off the list with this. This was a DVD set of Stargate SG-1. It was season five. It was not new, but it was in great used condition, and it sold for $7. And speaking of our friends Beth and Larry, this was actually one of the first things to sell from that haul. This was the 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate, a set of six continental hollow handle nine and a quarter inch medium knives. These sold together, I sold two sets of them, two identical sets, for $44 total. The next item up was this Starbucks coffee mug from 2010. It was a Christmas holiday red and white doves design by Rosanna, and this sold for $15. And this next item I always dubbed the OG Grumpy Cat. This was a painted kitty cat coffee mug in orange. Again, he looks very grumpy, uh, but he ended up selling for $5 plus shipping. Next up was this University of Colorado black adjustable strapback hat, and this sold for $10. 
And the last Mercari sale of this video is this Gone with the Wind Collector's Edition DVD set. It was new and sealed, and it sold for $15. And last but not least, we will check out some Poshmark sales as well. So Poshmark kicks off with these Asics. These were the women's size 7 blue and pink gel Exalt 2 running shoes, and they sold for $15. Next up was a pair of Robert Graham shirts that someone wanted as a bundle. I sent an offer of $36 for both shirts, and they accepted. So $36 for two, $18 apiece. If I recall correctly, these Robert Graham shirts were part of a larger bundle deal that I got at an estate sale, and these were one of the last two that were remaining. Next up was this pair of Heelys. These were the Youth Size 6 Motion Plus, featuring a black and red skull design, and these sold for $18. Following that was this Nightmare Before Christmas Jack Skellington decorative hand towel, and it sold for $10. And one of the best Poshmark sales that I can recall were these vintage Marith Francois Gearbod camouflage straight leg safari pants, and these sold for $95. So on a whim, I picked these up at a local Goodwill, and I didn't know what they were. Um, I did a brief search while I was there for the brand. I had never heard of it before. And the only pair of pants that I could find had an astronomical sold price, something like $150. Uh, needless to say, I bought them, and I had them listed, and I had them listed quite high. And it's one of those things where if you don't know what the real selling price is, the best thing you can do is list it high and accept offers, and eventually someone's going to find it and want to buy it. Now, the funny thing is, is that this particular buyer had sent me a numerous set of offers before. And on Poshmark, you can actually see... Um, when the buyer sends you a new offer, if it happens to be the same buyer, you can see it in the, in the thread on the app. You can actually see that that same buyer had sent you an offer before and if you declined it or whatever the reason was. Um, and so I knew right away that this person um, had stumbled across the listing again or at least wanted to take another chance to see if they could get it um, at any deeper of a discount. Um, so after going back and forth, back and forth, he offered me another number and I ended up settling on 95 um, which is great, you know, uh, for a, maybe about an 8 or $9 investment, selling something for 95 any day of the week, I'm happy. It's, of course, hard to top that, but the last item out of our Poshmark store was this vintage Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, or AOPA, blue snapback baseball hat, and it sold for $12. Hey guys, that's about all that I had for this video. I don't know if you can tell, but my voice is literally about ready to give out. I guess I'm super out of practice with this. So uh, before I let you go, uh, again, thank you to all the new subscribers. It really does you know, warm my heart to, uh, to know that even in my absence, people were finding this channel and liking and subscribing. And you know, if you don't mind, again, just go ahead and drop a comment below. Let me know how you found the channel. I'm, I'm really curious. And uh, while, you're, while you're down there, go ahead and click the like button, of course. And for those who haven't yet subscribed and if you feel moved to do so please do you know this is what this channel is all about reselling talk about what solds you know exchanging information learning it's a great community to be a part of so with that i need to go rest my voice maybe get a cup of tea or coffee or something like that so thanks again and we'll catch you on the next one